Governor Abbott just signed a bunch of new bills. Several of them are firearm related and they are all good bills. So let's take a look at these. Now these are bills that were just signed. They are going to be taking effect September 1st of 2021. I'm going to go over these and do my best to explain all of these. I'm going to throw out here the disclaimer. I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. If you are uncertain about something concerning this law, you need to get proper legal advice and not go off of what some guy on YouTube tells you. So we're going to go down this whole list. A number of these are really big ones that caused a lot of stir. Some of these I've actually talked about on here. Others are pretty low key ones that went through that you still need to be aware of. We are going to start with House Bill 2622, the Second Amendment Sanctuary State Act. The official designation is an act relating to the enforcement of certain federal laws regulating firearms, firearm accessories, and firearm ammunition within the state of Texas. This law concerns the regulations of firearms and firearm accessories. The big thing to take on this is that it won't let any state, local, or county entities work with the federal government to enforce any of these federal laws that um, are more restrictive than what we have on the books here in Texas. A few specific things in here it mentions that this will protect you from a registry requirement for a firearm or accessories or ammunition, a requirement that an owner of any of these have a license as condition of owning, a requirement that a background check be conducted for private sales of any of these, a program for confiscating a firearm or any of these other items from someone who is not otherwise already prohibited, a program that requires you to sell any of these items back to the government. And then it goes on to say that it will cut state funds from any entity um, within the state that tries to enforce any of these. And I have some other comments related to this one that I'm going to get into after another bill that kind of um, exists in the same area. The next one we will talk about is House Bill 1927 or the Firearm Carry Act of 2021. This is an act relating to provisions governing the carrying of a firearm by a person who is 21 years of age or older and not otherwise prohibited by state or federal law from possessing the firearm and to other provisions related to carrying, possession, transporting, or storing of a firearm or other weapon creating criminal offenses. This is known by most people as constitutional carry or unlicensed carry. Plainly put, this is if you can legally own it, you can legally carry it. If you're 21 or older. That was the one negative thing that was snuck into this one. And a lot of people were kind of upset that that got in there. But the way I heard another person put it is don't let perfection be the enemy of progress. We're able to move forward and move to a better situation. Don't let that stop it. Something else could be passed. It could amend that and eventually lower this age down if you think that the 21 requirement is a negative. So it's still good that it passed because a lot of people are better off. Now this one is pretty long. And the reason that's pretty long is because a lot of other laws that are on the books had to be amended to um, accommodate this one. I mean, anything in there talking about, um, you know, unlicensed carry being illegal, um, they had to have it changed in there. And there's a lot of other little um, laws on the books and places that had to be changed for that. So I am not going to go over all of this because it is quite long and really um, starts getting kind of difficult for me to um, be able to get through all of it. One big takeaway on here that is important is the creation of the 30 
.05 sign referring to section 30.05 of the Texas Handgun Code. Now there already was a 3006 and a 3007 law and signs that go along with those, the 3006 or 3006 signs make it illegal to um, conceal carry on the premises. 3007 signs make it illegal to carry openly on the premises of a place if they are displaced. If they are displaying either of those signs um, with the appropriate language, you know, in the appropriate manner by the entrance. This has created a 3005 which makes it um, technically just illegal to carry a firearm in there. And the way it is worded, it makes it illegal to carry a firearm, licensed or unlicensed. Below that, it says it is a defense to prosecution if you have a license. So I guess the way it's written, you could be you know, yelled at and arrested for carrying if you walk past a 3005 sign when you have a license, but then you could use that as defense um, to not be um, ultimately, um, you know, proven guilty. That's a little weird. I don't know why they didn't just make it refer to uh, the unlicensed carry. That seems a uh, strange way to go about it. So that's the big thing to know now is that if you're going to be carrying without a license, you have to um, know all of the signage that um, can make you legally not have to carry somewhere. House Bill 1500, an act relating to authority of the governor and certain political subdivisions to regulate firearms, ammunition, knives, air guns, explosives, and combustibles, and certain associated businesses during certain disasters and emergencies. Okay, now this does a number of really good things here. And this, um, the TSRA and GOA have always pointed out that this is not about Governor Abbott. This is just about um, the governor of the state in general. That this will stop the governor from being able to restrict your gun rights during an emergency. Okay, They can't say that you can't openly carry in an area because of um, an emergency. They can't stop um, entities from producing or selling or distributing um, firearms or accessories or ammunition during a crisis. If you want to be able to still do that, that that's a vital resource there and that has to be kept open. This most recently kind of had to do with COVID where um, a lot of things on like restaurants and stuff were being restricted and um, a lot of non-essential businesses were being shut down by local entities and stuff. Um, this would stop the governor from being able to um, restrict those. House Bill 957. Okay, this is the Suppressor Freedom Act. This is if a suppressor is made in Texas, it's bought by someone in Texas, and it stays in Texas, it is not subject to federal regulation. And they go through there by defining what made in Texas means. It means it has to be manufactured and the majority of it. There can be some small parts and stuff brought in from elsewhere, but has to um, be majority of it made manufactured here in Texas, has to have stamped on it made in Texas. That might actually be a good selling point for a lot of people. And this is where I am going to get into my little caveat that I was going to throw in concerning the Sanctuary State Act and the Suppressor Freedom Act. While Texas is not going to do anything to enforce this, and this is going to stop any state, local, or county authorities from doing anything to go after you on it, the feds is a whole nother thing. And the federal government could still come after you. So, if you have a Texas-made suppressor, that you're using here in the state of Texas, 
you probably don't want to go around on social media showing that thing off all the time where the ATF can find you. And that would also be true of anything that the sanctuary state law would be protecting you from. Um, we've seen people in other states be like, oh, I've got this thing and ATF said it was illegal, but my state said it wasn't. So na 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 And then, yeah, the ATF saw that video and came after them and just found them on their own without using any state resources. So, yeah. It's good, and it's definitely a good message from the state, but, yeah, think about this really, really well before you do any type of actions um, based off of these laws, all right? Senate Bill 18, an act relating to the authority of the governor and certain political subdivisions to regulate firearms, ammunition, knives, air guns, explosives, and combustibles and certain associated businesses during certain disasters and emergencies. Okay, this seems to be more or less the same thing as House Bill 1500. Maybe there was some little nuance between the two that I didn't catch. I don't know, but I really didn't see any difference, so I'm not sure why both exist. I'm sure someone could explain that, but I think it's the same thing as the other one. We'll go up one more. Senate Bill 19. Relating to prohibited contracts with companies that discriminate against the firearm and ammunition industries. This is... If there is a business that is making very anti 2A policies where they are actively trying to do things to hurt the Second Amendment rights of Americans, whether it be on a large scale or a small scale, the state will not do business with them. And any entity within the state that tries to do business with them is going to lose their state funds. We'll see what type of impact this has. This would make a lot of businesses not be able to um, do business with the state. Now, a lot of businesses that do this sort of thing tend to like to go around and boycott things already. So... Um, it may not be much of a loss to them. They may just be like, yeah, we were going to boycott Texas anyway. I don't know, but we will see what happens. Up one more, Senate Bill 20, relating to carrying and storing a handgun or handgun ammunition by a hotel guest. Now, the way that law is interpreted here in Texas right now with Castle Doctrine, you can carry... A handgun in your hotel room and the hotel cannot stop you from doing that because um, since you are um, temporarily residing there it's essentially your home your castle you're good there now that did not necessarily apply to any other place in the hotel so if they put up signage blocking you from being able to carry in the hotel you wouldn't be able to carry anywhere else in the hotel. You could carry in your room, but you would have to um, take it off of you, put it in some sort of bag or something, carry it out, and then put it back on. What this does is that they cannot stop you by signage from carrying from your vehicle to your room. You can carry there and they can't stop you. You can carry the whole time. This does not necessarily mean that you can carry over the entire premises. So if the Continental Breakfast location is not directly from your car to your hotel room and they have the signage up, you wouldn't be able to go into there. You wouldn't necessarily be able to go into a conference room or the gym or the pool. I don't know why you'd carry at the pool, but anyway, so you wouldn't be able to carry at these other locations, but they absolutely can't stop you from carrying from your car to your room, and that is a huge improvement. And the last one on the list, this is a big jump from 20 to Senate Bill 550, relating to the manner of carrying a handgun by a person who holds a license. Okay, so right now for um, licensed open carry, you are restricted to either using a 
shoulder holster or a belt holster. Now those are the most common places to open carry. And this law will allow you to open carry anywhere on your person as long as it is secure and you have control over it. Now exactly who would want to do this? Well, it seems kind of odd at first because you're like, okay, um, I guess you could like open carry on your leg or something. I mean, I know people can seal carry there, but that's a strange place to open carry. This is important for some people who have disabilities who may need to carry at places that would um, traditionally be considered unusual. That gives them a lot more freedom to have it in different places. So this is the list of all the gun laws that have been signed into effect in Texas this year. Once again, these all go into effect on September 1st. So don't try to do anything regarding these before that. And let me know what you think all these good, bad. Let me know down in the comments. If you found this video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and a like. You can go down into the comment section and leave any thoughts you have down there. And if you're interested, you can also subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification to make sure that you catch all the videos that I post so you don't miss anything. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G, and we'll see you next time.